Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here with my Spinolution Echo for our long-awaited video on spinning wheel ratios, what they are and how to use them. Well, I thought I would demonstrate on my Echo because especially for ben beginners, Spinolution has a great line of wheels. They are easy to use and easy to understand. So I'll do another video at a later date on my matchless, but it has a little bit of a more complicated setup. It is a double drive setup, and what that means is this right here is the drive band on my Spinolution. Well, it has two drive bands basically, where the Spinolution and most other spinning wheels only have one. And I'll talk about double drive setup and all of that in a later video. So let's just dive right into it. Simply put, Ratios are just the number of times that the little wheel that spins on your spinning wheel goes around in comparison to the larger wheel on your spinning wheel. So for every one time the big wheel makes a complete circle, for me in my case, the flyer will circle around about depending on which ratio I have it on, will circle, circle around so many times. So for every one revolution that the big wheel makes, your flyer or bobbin, depending on how your wheel is made and set up, will go around a number of times. Also, depending on which ratio, right here, which whirl you have your drive band set up on. So an easy way to figure out, well, first of all, figure out what your ratio is on your wheel. Let's say you have an older spinning wheel or a wheel that maybe you, you don't know what your ratio is. I'll show you an easy way to figure out, and then we're going to talk about why knowing your ratio matters and how you can use that information while spinning. So I just mentioned that the ratio, you know, you've seen it written out as 10 to 1, 5 to 1, 20 to 1. Well, that 10 or 5, the bigger number, is going to be the number of times the flyer, in my case on the Echo, spins around. For every one time, the big wheel spins around, okay? So to make this easier to see, I've put a purple ribbon on my flyer, and let me see if I can show you. Oh, and let me take this off and show you. And at the very top of my big wheel, I put one of my daughter's stickers. So what I'm going to do is slowly treadle so that the sticker on my big wheel goes around, okay? So I'll watch as it goes all the way around and comes back to the top. And then I will count the number of times that this ribbon on my flyer goes around. Set this back up so it's steady. So right now, this is the whirl on Spinolution. It's built in on the back of the flyer here. I have three different settings I can put it on simply by moving the drive band. There is the smallest setting, then a medium. You just pull the, the band up and then the largest. I'm going to put it on the largest right now. Okay, so let's try this. I have my wheel at the bottom is set up at the top and I'm going to slowly, slowly have this wheel go around once and I'm going to count the number of times that this purple ribbon goes around, okay? So there's one, two, and my wheel, my big wheel has made half of a revolution. So the flyer has gone around two. So this would be two to one, but we're not all the way at the top yet. So we're gonna keep going. Three. And finally, four, well, almost exactly four. So on the largest setting, the largest whirl, my Spinolution Echo has a ratio of about four to one. 
Now if I move it down to the smallest ratio, what that's going to do is make the number of times my flyer spins around greater. So the big wheel can go around one whole circle, and but this flyer will go around more times. So let's start that again. I don't have everything, let me move the sticker. I don't have everything lined up exactly. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here is already C1, two, three, four, that was the halfway point, by the way. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the ratio for the smallest whirl on my Spinolution Echo is eight. Eight revolutions of the flyer compared to one revolution of the wheel. So why is this important? Well, I'm going to be really, I'm gonna speak in generalities here. It's important because the more revolutions that your flyer or your bobbin, depending on your wheel setup, the more revolutions it makes, the more twist you put in your yarn because it's going faster than your big wheel is going, okay? If this flyer is set on the lowest ratio, the four, then I'm going to have less twist in my yarn. So when would you want to use, say, a lower ratio that has less twist in your, in your yarn? Well, typically that's going to be for your art yarns, your um, thicker yarns, anything that you want to be thick and airy, anything that you do not want to be really fine and thin and compressed, okay? So your smaller ratios, or your smaller whirl, I should say, not ratio, your smaller whirl, which gives you a higher ratio. Remember the smaller whirl has an eight to one ratio. The bigger whirl has a four to one ratio, okay? So why would I want maybe a higher ratio, an eight to one? Well, that would be if I was spinning a fine yarn a yarn where I wanted to compress some of the air out, if, or if I wanted to spin much faster, okay? So I'm gonna show you the difference that your whirl settings or your ratios can have. I have here, let me take off the sticker now and the ribbon. I have here just some locks that I processed a while ago. I believe, I believe these were Cormo, possibly, or Rommeldale. I cannot remember which one because it's been a while since I processed these. So I wanted to show you with locks instead of a roving because I think it'll be a lot easier to see the difference in the yarn that I produced. So I'm going to move closer and right now let's start the way we did when we began this, we're going to set this on the biggest whirl, okay? So right here I've got it on the biggest whirl, which means I'm going to have fewer revolutions of the flyer. That means the flyer is going to go around four times for every one time the big wheel goes around, okay? And this is going to give me more of a thicker, loftier yarn because I'm not putting as much twist into it. So let's see what that looks like. Let me get this all set up here. So as always, we are going to open up our leader. I'm actually gonna get this on here a little bit first. I'm gonna open up our leader. There we are. And I'm just spinning locks right now. I'm not really this isn't a yarn I'm spinning for any purpose other than demonstration here, okay? So now we're going to let the twist start building on our yarn, coming back on the flyer. And you'll see I'm making a nice, thick yarn and it's a nice, gentle, easy spin. I can go thinner, 
but it does not have as much twist in that spot as I would typically make if I was spinning thin, okay? So we're coming up with a, let me do a little more and then I'm gonna pull out the yarn and show you. So you want to use a lower ratio, in this case, a four to one ratio, when you don't want as much twist in your yarn. Lower ratio equals lower twist, okay? See, I'm getting these nice fluffy parts let me pull out some of the yarn, okay, see? So we've got a nice textured, fluffy yarn on the lowest ratio. So now I'm going to move to my highest ratio, which on the Echo that I have here is going to be eight to one, which means that this flyer is going to go around eight times compared to every one time that the big wheel goes around. What this is going to do is put more twist into my yarn and as I'm going it will actually also be a faster spin and it will probably make me um, compress some of the air out of the yarn. Okay, so as you can already see I'm treadling at the same speed but my flyer is going much faster and I am already you can see it just wants to be thinner I'm not doing anything really differently with my fingers but because it's faster I'm still getting these areas of texture but it's putting more twist in the yarn so that even when I wanted to make a thick spot like this that was about as thick as it's going to go. Here, I'm letting it draft out more to make it thicker. But you see it's putting more twist in, so even when I let twist come back here into a thick area, draft back, it's going to compress the yarn because there's more twist, so what happens is the yarn squishes down and squishes out the air, okay? So let's take a look, put the rest of this down, let's take a look at this yarn that we just spun. So you see this? You can see it nicely against my jeans here. It's a nice thin yarn. Still we have some texture, okay? We do still have that, but it's definitely not the same as the loftier yarn we spun earlier. Let's take that off. Let's get to that that we did with the lower ratio. And I can even tell a difference in pulling it off my, here it comes. Look, we went from higher ratio right here, higher ratio, to here, lower ratio, less twist in your yarn. So this is a lower ratio, flyer going around four times, and this, is a higher ratio flyer going around eight times. So which yarn do you think is going to be stronger? This is me just bouncing the yarn like this, just kind of seeing if it'll break. So the more twist in your yarn, the stronger your yarn, right? Let's see what happens. It might not break when I do this with the lower ratio, but it might. Well, it's not breaking either, but I am having little pieces fall off. So they're both still pretty sturdy, pretty strong, but you can see the difference in the thickness and in the texture of the yarn, right? This is definitely a fluffier yarn as opposed to this, which is a more compressed, more even yarn, okay? So that is your main difference in ratios. Um, just the important thing to keep in mind is that the higher the ratio, the more times your flyer or your bobbin spin in relation to one spin of the big wheel, the more twist you're going to put into your yarn. The more twist you put into your yarn, the more it's going to want to spin fine and it's going to compress the air out of that yarn. Okay, so the main difference in ratios is, remember, lower ratio 
fat yarn. Higher ratio, skinny yarn. That's pretty much it when it comes to ratios, okay? I hope this was helpful. I'm planning to do a series on different parts of the wheel and how we can use them together and um, how they can improve or impact your spinning. So let me know what you'd like to see next and I will put that out for you. Until next time, I'm Stephanie, hoping you have a great day. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. And thank you, thank you for all of your comments. I really love talking to you all. And thanks for all of the tips too that you all gave me when I was spinning the cashmere and angora.